I am representing Canon uh, South Asian Southeast Asia Regional Office here called Canon Singapore. It's three and a half billion dollar business in about 18 countries. There are six countries, uh, including India, uh, Vietnam, Malaysia, Thailand, Singapore, etc., where Canon has its own operations. So the total staff strength in this region for Canon would be approximately about 3,000 people. Um, discussing a little bit and sharing my thoughts on this topic, uh, uh, first of all, uh, I feel that when we are talking in this context of management education, we are sitting on treasure. Uh, and I say so because as I look around uh, the global economy of 75 odd trillion, if 25 trillion is going to come from here, from Asia, we are sitting on about 33 percent of the global economy. Not only that, I mean if you look at the incremental growth in the economy, uh, almost out of 2 trillion additional wealth creation in the world, 1.5 billion is, 1.5 trillion is going to come from Asia. Uh, if 75 percent of the new economic wealth creation is going to come from this region, there is no doubt that if MBAs are the pivot and an important lever or the business school and the leadership creation are the important lever for doing that wealth creation, this is a very, very relevant and important topic. And I think uh, in Asia, this has uh, not attracted that much of discussion uh, in the past as it is now gathering momentum and therefore I am very happy to be seeing an, a conclave of this kind. Uh, in fact, uh, it deserves to have even wider representation because this would be a major thrust uh, creating engine for the whole region. There are four arguments that uh, I just want to quickly put on the table. Uh, some of them might be challenging to the academicians who are sitting here or the deans and the directors of various management schools who are sitting here. Uh, my first point is that I look at the expectations of MBAs and it is quite interesting and amusing if you were to google this of expectation of MBAs in Asia, seven out of the ten sites in the links that you are going to see are going to say salary expectations. They are talking about the money and the growth in salaries, growth in compensations, etc. This according to me is a bad labeling. This is one of the biggest challenge that is increasingly creating a wall between fresh management graduates and a widespread footprint of the Asian enterprises. <coughs> we are not talking about just global giants, but we are talking about millions of other enterprises in Asia which are emerging and are going to be tripling their revenues in next four years time. Uh, and this part therefore deserves to have a little bit more deliberation, a little bit more attention. I think uh, the whole positioning has also been distorted by the media and uh, I mean I was looking at articles on MBA and the most uh, eye-catching articles talk about ROI as if the only purpose of MBA and the management school is to create ROI for their students who are studying there and it talks about even 15 percent or 20 percent and all these kind of ROI discussion on the school education of this kind according to my own uh, observation and this is the challenge on the table I think is going to pull this whole management positioning and MBA positioning a little bit on the wrong side. My second argument is on the expectations from MBA uh, and when we are looking at the expectation from MBA and I think to a great extent uh, large at a, at a larger uh, point the corporates uh, particularly in Asia uh, would have to take a responsibility of uh, articulating these expectations rather more clearly which many times doesn't come out so clearly and at a very broad level it's very abstract which says good students, brilliant students, smart students, how do you assess that uh, and this is an important element because if one of the important characteristics of the product of management schools is going to create those students who are going to be helping organizations create future then it is important part that the leadership skills particularly the softer element of leadership skills are measured in some way uh, 
when we are looking at these leadership skills as an expectation from the corporate, um, to my mind, there are three levels. Uh, and the entry level gets missed out completely, which according to me is the first most important level, which is the personal level leadership skills. The second level are the social level leadership skills, which gets touched upon a little bit in the experience of two years MBA course, but still I think we don't do so much of justice. The third level, which is the institutional level, organizational level, enterprise level, strategic level leadership probably gets too much attention, gets too much focus. With the result, the personal level, the entry level leadership skills, which are basically personal traits, those kind of softer elements of the students many times get missed out. Uh, at Canon, we experienced of creating a finishing school to a finishing school. And if for many students in developing world, in developing countries of Asian countries, and I'm talking about Myanmar or Cambodia and Bangladesh and all those countries, etc., including India, uh, and a large chunk of leave the top 10 institutes, 15 institutes that we have been seeing on the slide, but things that you don't see on the slides are thousands of other MBA students. And when the students come out from there, there are finishing schools being created. And these finishing schools are trying to kind of give them a little bit of good, smooth profile. But when they come and join, we experience that it is very important for us to create our own finishing school. And this finishing school is essentially doing, as a part of the learning and development, essentially doing this personal level leadership skills measurement, what in most of the organization we call it as assessment centers. Uh, I would encourage, and this is my other challenge to the management schools, is according to me the assessment center should be there at the management school. According to me the personal traits and the personality traits of students, and this is a great favor to them, to the individuals, should be measured out there. So that there is a discussion at some point amongst the students, amongst the consultancy within the management school in helping people shape up that first entry level leadership skills. Uh, the third argument that I wanted to put across is this argument of uh, uh, the le experiential learning part, which is very much uh, attracting attention of everybody in your curriculum, in your, uh, which leads into your placements, etc. Uh, and here is what I have to say. Uh, while case studies is a fantastic instrument for creating simulated environment for learning, and I'm trying to look at the alignment of when they come and join organizations like ours. Uh, one of the big difficulties is that the case study discussions does not equip them fully into more experiential way of addressing issues. Companies are full of challenges every day. All of us sitting here have 10 or 15 things on our mind. And these challenges continue to keep changing, etc., etc. I think the immersion programs that the management students would rather learn a lot more should be longer rather than just summer placements. Uh, how to design, I have no idea. But all I have to say is that in order to make the management students align and hit the road running more effectively within the organizations, it has to go beyond just a case study, particularly from an Asian context. Uh, the placement uh, is another area which many times bothers corporates and enterprises which are your customers in a way. Uh, and it bothers because I think uh, in Asian countries we are seeing a lot more six month uh, iterations. Which means when uh, people join, uh, six months is a, is a very important period within which we figure that out and students figure that out, uh, new trainees figure that out. Uh, that it doesn't suit. And uh, with the result, uh, this, is, this cost huge money to the company. Uh, and this is another topic, how to address this, but this is an important part that needs uh, more discussion. Uh, I think students figure that out a little later in life after joining an organization that what they want to do, really speaking, and do not many times pick up the jobs which are the one where they are passionate about. This misalignment also needs to be corrected if we really want the management school uh, or MBAs to be to have a wider footprint in Asia. And the last uh, uh, argument that I have is with regard to customization and internationalization of the course curriculums, etc. 
that have been a matter of discussion yesterday too. Uh, I think by and large as the business is getting more and more globalized and I'm not talking about only companies like Canon or MX or Microsoft etc which are very global in nature so the dynamics would be pretty much similar across and therefore uh, a management education understanding elements like strategy elements like decision making conflict handling etc are pretty much international in nature however the context being very cultural uh, that's why uh, I would rather argue saying that in all management curriculum in this region uh, this element requires tinkering that customization we don't see much and therefore sometimes there is a strong feeling that it's better to pick up an Asian studying in US or studying in London and pick them up from there if the cost is going to be marginally uh, different or almost similar rather than somebody from the institutes within within hell and there is no doubt 90 percent or more of the uh, students are consumed for the domestic market uh, and that kind of level of customization so the trade-off between that customization is another issue which is vital uh, and as a part of the same argument I would say I think Asia needs a lot more executive education I think there is still a, a big inertia amongst many organizations in Asia and I'm talking about now Asian organizations uh, where uh, still that deep level conviction of attracting MBAs and taking the middle management and senior management almost in the next five or ten years time as a part of the blueprint with those MBAs from good institutes like this to create future for the organization and that engine creation is there is still inertia and therefore it is vital that middle management particularly the executive education is given a lot more uh, momentum. And I do see in uh, Asia this, uh, this part is not that strong. Still the focus is more on the full-time management course. So these are some of the arguments. Thanks.